Now, now we're going to talk about some micro, some some micro basics, right? Some okay. micro basics, gram staining basics, if you will. Perfect. What next basics? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So. I like to, I'm actually going to uh, give a little gram stain basics and we're going to talk a little bit about meningitis at the same time. So this is a win-win. Okay. Win-win for everyone. Okay. So if they give us a gram positive cockeye, let's say, what should mm -hmm. come to mind? Gram positive cockeye? Yeah, what bug? Yeah, so normally staff comes to mind, strep comes to mind. Anybody else? There are there any other gram positive cockeye that you know of? Uh, strep bearding. Well, that's still strep. Well, no, that's a strep. Mhm. Mm um, that one weirdo. He hangs uh, out. He hangs out in the gallbladder a lot. He's just kind of chilling out there. He's all soluble. The bile, just hanging out. Say, there we go. That's right. Enterococcus. Yeah. Okay. So, enterococcus. Right? Enterococcus. All right. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. So, if they give us a presentation of meningitis, so let's come over here now. We're going to come back to the gram stain. Mm -hmm. So, what would tell you meningitis? Um, and the, the presentation of the patient? Yeah. Uh, it would have been, it would have with like headache, neck stiffness. That's right. Um, Local rigidity. Yes. Um, uh, photophobia. Sure. Fever. Yeah. Very nice. Photophobia, fever. Cool. That sounds like meningitis to me, right? Yeah. Okay. So then let's say we have, oh, also they have two signs, two very unique signs. Yeah. Do you remember the names? Um, um, Kearney. That's right. And is it B? That's right. And Brzezinski. Oh, it is Brzezinski. Oh, okay. Brzezinski. Brzezinski. Uh, something like that. So Koenig and Brzezinski, right? So K for kicking. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you straight, straight your leg. Yeah, when you straighten your leg, it causes neck pain. And B for bending of your neck. Yes. That neck, so just, which also causes pain. So that right there tells me meningitis, amongst mm -hmm. other things, right? Just a couple of buzzwords, right? Okay, so now let's say <clears throat> your patient came in and, oh, let me take talk about this. We do CSF. We check out his CSF. CSF, yeah. Yeah, so CSF findings, right? So we can find a few things. They would like. They always like to mention uh, what type of cells are found there. They like to mention uh, protein count, mm -hmm. right? And they like to mention sugar, right? Glucose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if let's say if it uh, if it's a uh, let's go with the cells. So let's say if we have a lot of neutrophils, what do you expect to see? What type of infection would that be? Uh, bacterial. Bacterial, yeah. So bacterial is associated, right, with the neutrophils. Protein is going to be high, but we'll get to that in a second. And what about uh, glucose? Glucose would be low because they're bacteria. That's right. Bacteria love to eat glucose, right? They they just come in and they just hoard. Yeah. They just eat our mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, right, right, right. So glucose will be low. Oops, let me fix that. Nice. Okay. Now, what if on CSF findings, we find a bunch of lymphocytes, right? T cells or macrophages? Well, there will be uh, anything but bacteria. So anything but bacteria. bacteria. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So maybe we have fungus mm -hmm. or yeah. our friend TB. Yes. Now, in regards to fungus and TB, uh, well, well, again, again, we'll get to protein in a second. What about uh, glucose? What do they do? Do they do they like to eat glucose? Do they eat our sugar, fungus, and TB? Uh, no, they don't eat our sugar. Oh, swing and a miss. But they do. They do. They're oh. hungry. They're hungry. 
Yes, they eat our sugar. They eat our okay. sugar. Yes. Okay, so, so far, how do we differentiate bacterial from fungal or TB? We look I'm at the cell so type. They both have decrease in, in glucose. Okay. All right, cool. But what if we see lymphocytes and my glucose is normal? Then what would it be? Uh, in that case, it would be a virus. Virus, right? Viral, viral, because uh, they don't, yeah, they don't need our sugar. No. They're the vegans, you know. That's right. Yeah. They're different. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, with that being said, I want you to look at this. Come over here. Boom. So with protein, here's one thing I want you to just know. Boom. It's high for the majority of them. So don't worry about too, too much about protein. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Quick little connection. Quick little connection. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's make this longer. Okay. So let's say, let's say we have, um, I guess I'll put, oops, I'll do NA for not applicable. So let's say we'll do, look at that. We have no cells, high protein, normal glucose. Hmm. What would that be? Just protein? Yep. Just this combination. Ever seen that before? No viruses, no bacteria, no fungal, no cells, just high protein, high pressure. You have to be anything, something else. Fun no. fact, this is known as our friend Guillaume barre Oh. That's right. So, yes, Guillaume barre found it to be interesting. No more cells, no more glue. Yes. So, we'll get to that on another day. Okay, fantastic. So now we understand that if we, since we're talking about gram standing, we know we're talking about bacteria. Yeah. So they're, what they're going to say is that the patient came in and they had the nuchal rigidity, they had the Brzezinski sign, the Koenig sign, yada, yada, all that stuff. And then they're going to give you this presentation right here. Right? They're going to say in CSF, glucose was low and we found PMNs and protein high. You say, well, this is definitely bacterial. Bacteria. Okay. Side, huh? It's a bacteria. Infection. That's right. That's right. Uh, side note, normal glucose, our normal serum glucose is about 100, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So CSF glucose should be about half of that. So it could be no, around 30 to 50 roughly, right? So I keep it around 50, average about 50, right? Okay. For CSF glucose. So I'll keep it around 50. Okay. Nice. So let's continue. Patient comes in, they have all these signs and symptoms of meningitis. And you say, well, you definitely got it. And then they say, let me zoom in. And then they say it is in a, um, well, let's say it's in a baby. Okay. A newborn. Hmm? What are three common causes of meningitis in a newborn? Uh, that's been a, this time, not like baby bell. That's right. You ever that's had the red cheeses, the little red yeah. baby bell? Yeah, like it. Exactly. I will have rubia strep, um, E. coli. That's right. Groupie strep. E. coli mm -hmm. and listeria. That's right, and listeria. And then they say patient has a uh, patient presents with a gram positive cocci. Of the three, which one does it have to be? Groupie strep. Exactly. You see that? Yeah. By just knowing the gram stain. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Done. Okay, great. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. What if they give you a gram negative cocci? Okay, so what are you who are you thinking about then? Uh like E. coli. E. coli? Mm, no, 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 not for gram negative cocci. Oh, oh, there we have um influenza. Mm, gram negative cocci. Not coxillobacillus. What if I were to say diplococci? Oh, gonorrhea, Neisseria, gonorrhea. It's Nicer just Neisseria. Neisseria, Neisseria by day, but on the weekends, right at nighttime. Moraxella. Oh, Moraxella, yeah. Moraxella by night. What are you doing? That's what I say. What are you up to? I don't know. All right, so Neisseria, Moraxella, right? Very similar. Gram mm -hmm. negative. Cockeye. So your patient comes in and he has the 
Uh, let's see, let's come back over here. Brzezinski sign, Koenig sign, the bacteria, PMNs, high, glucose, slow. It hurts when I bend my neck, photophobia, fever, right? And you say, this is definitely a meningitis case. And then they say on gram stain, we have gram negative cocci. And you're going to say? Uh, Neisseria meningitis. Has to be Neisseria, you see? Yeah. Neisseria commonly affects around uh, people around you know, the young adults. That's, that's about the age range, the age range, the young okay. adults. Because right? they don't know what they're doing at that age, right? Mm -hmm. Right, that's fine. That's all right. It happens. It happens. Yeah, it's young kids. All right. Let's see here. Let's continue. Now, we also have our gram positive rods. Mm -hmm. Gram positive rods. So, do you have a mnemonic for your, your gram positive rods? No. I think okay. Just all right. Well, I remembered it like this, BLC squared, right? They call them uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes, right? That's the sandwich that some people eat, bacon, lettuce. It's literally just bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes, right? Okay. But what if, uh, like my son, for example, my son doesn't like tomatoes all of a sudden, but he likes corn, right? Okay. Yeah. So, okay, instead of bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes, let's make it bacon, lettuce, and, uh, and corn, right? And, yeah. and an excessive amount of it too, right? Squared. He likes corn. All right. So there's a so what you say, well, what is all this? Right? Why 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 do we need to know about this this sandwich? Right? Well, I like to think of it like this. We have Bacillus species. Bacillus. We have Listeria. Listeria. We have Clostridium. Oh, well, we have Clostridium, sure. And Coronobacterium. Coriny. See, so corn. I just uh, call it corny. Bacterium. Oh. I know it's coriny, but I call it corny bacterium. You see that? Yeah. BLC squared. Coriny or corny bacterium. Corn, BLC squared. All right, good. So, again, same patient. It, my neck hurts. I got photophobia. Krizi uh, Brzezinski sign, Koenig sign positive. And then they say on gram stain, we found a gram positive rod. Let's say in a baby. Now what is it? You know, in a newborn. It has to be listeria. Has to be listeria. It has to be. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Very nice. Very nice. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Let's see here. Uh, come over here. And then what if we have uh, gram positive branching rods? Those are two. Those are two of them. That is nocardia and. Right. Um, and actinomyces. That's right. Actinomyces. Act, yeah. actinomyces. So, what do you need? What do we know about nocardia? What's very, very unique about nocardia? That is uh, partially acid fast. Very nice. What's another name for partially acid fast? So I'll put half acid fast. Uh, the Nelson. Yeah, right. You know Liam Nielsen's younger brother, Zeal. You didn't know they were related. Yeah. So Zeal Nielsen. Yeah. Zeal Nielsen, Liam Nielsen's younger brother. Okay. Also. Or what's another funky name? Carbofusion. Yeah, something like that. I think there's a C somewhere in there. So carbofusion, right? Those are all different ways that you can say acid fast or zeonilson oh, or whatever, yeah. okay? So if they say that nocardia is partial, it came out positive, partially positive on carbofusion, I say, okay, that's close enough. That's acid fast. Now, the reason why we need to know half, oops, there we go. The half, why is that? Mm -hmm. Why do we have to know half? Uh, partially I acid fast. I don't know, because there is another one that is complete. That's right, and who's that guy? Oh, yeah. I don't, Who's I don't. Tuberculosis. Oh, to be okay. Tuberculosis. So tuberculosis okay. is acid fast, not partially. Completely okay. acid fast. Completely acid fast. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All okay. right. Very nice. And what about actinomyces? What can you tell me about that guy? Uh, well, the actinomyces, the mm -hmm. branching gram positive, is an anaerobe. Mm hmm um and the disease that caused does the ulcers uh, with sulfur oh they have sulfur they have sulfur what 
granules. That's right. And what color are uh, these granules? Yellow. Yellow. So they say yellow, sandy, sulfur granules, right? Its full name is Actinomyces israeli. Israel. Yeah. So I had a student of mine. He tells me, he's like, well, what do you find a lot of in Israel? He's like, well, there's a lot of sand. I said, okay, well, there it is. Yellow sand. Oh, okay. So yellow, sandy, sulfur granules. Actinomyces israeli. Perfect. Right? Okay. And they also have these unique, oops, they have these unique draining fistulas in the mouth in the right mouth. yeah it's nasty so you'll have like some sort of infection of the mandible and then it starts draining into the oral yeah. cavity it's disgusting yeah so let's talk about these draining fistulas be on the lookout for a description of a fistula they will not give you the name fistula they'll describe it but they most likely will say the word draining and if they do be on the lookout okay all right. Let's see. Gram positive branch rods. All right. So then uh, that's basically our gram positive. So anything else, anything else after this would be gram negative. Gram negative. Yeah. Anything else would be a gram negative. Okay. So again, again, let's say, come over here, gram negative. So anything else would be gram negative. So here we go again. We have the young baby. Young baby got the disease, got a meningitis, all, the whole presentation. It's a neonate, and they say on gram stain, we have a gram negative, and then they start throwing out a whole bunch of stuff. Rod, uh, simple gram negative, uh, lactose fermenting, and you say, oh my goodness, what could this be? But you already know. In the baby, what are the three most common causes? Let's see, where is that? Copia strep, E. coli, right. and hysteria. Exactly, and we already know that this is a gram positive. Mm -hmm. And we know that this is a gram positive. And the vignette said a gram negative, blah, 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 blah. That's it. I said, that's it. I'm done. I heard gram negative. It has to be one of these three. It has to be E. coli. Because yeah. he's the gram negative one of the three. Yeah. You see? Very nice. Okay. So that is gram positive and gram negative.